This video is to walk through um, the budget demo that we did in class. Um, some of the things we'll talk about are formatting cells, um, using basic formulas, and using cell references. So the idea for this exercise is to create kind of a sample budget. I'll be putting in made up values here. Um, I'd encourage you to try putting in your own estimated budget values. It makes it a little more interesting. So in this first cell, I'm just going to make this a title. Because this is my title, I'm going to bump up the font size. So selecting the cell where I said budget, I'm going to increase the font size here, maybe make it bold. Um, you could change the font if you wanted to. And because this is getting a little bit bigger, I could either resize this column or I can actually group several cells together and merge them. There's an option here for merge and center. And this creates kind of one mega cell. This isn't necessary. This is just sort of for formatting reasons um, to give us a nice label. All right, giving us a little space, I'm going to create two columns um, for income and amount. And then over a little bit, I'm also going to do expenses and amount. Because these are headings, I'm going to make all of these bold. And I think I'll increase the font a little bit as well. To quickly resize a column, you can double click on the right hand edge and it will automatically make it fit what you've got there. This can get a little tricky when you have merged cells, but looks like it works here. Okay, I want to make a little table of income sources and expenses. So uh, maybe I'll have salary, tips, and freelance money. Go ahead and come up with some income amounts for yourself and then put in just some estimated uh, amounts for each one of these. And then I'm going to do the same thing for expenses. So this is just an exercise, but try and come up with maybe seven or more um, expenses. All right, all of these amounts are should be dollar amounts or some kind of currency. So I'm going to highlight those numbers and then come into the number formatting and format this in the currency, or in this case, um, US dollars. I'm also going to make these tables a little bit more clear by adding some borders. So highlighting the headers, I'm going to add um, a bottom border to this. You could do a regular bottom border. I'm going to do a double bottom border just because I like how those look. Okay, so we've got some nice income and expense amounts um, formatted here. Giving myself a little space, I'm going to create three different sort of total columns. I'm going to have a total income, a total expenses, and a balance. And then to the side of each of these, I want to compute each value. So my total income, I basically want to just add together these three sources of income that I have here. Um, you could just do that manually uh, with a calculator, of course, but we really want to use Excel to do this. So whenever you want Excel to calculate something, you're going to use a formula. And formulas in Excel always start with an equal sign. So I'm going to type an equal sign here, and this is what tells Excel, hey, I want you to calculate something for me. Now one way to find this total income is you could actually just type in the three numbers just added together. Excel will definitely compute this out for me and get the total income. But I want to take advantage of the fact that I have these values in my spreadsheet. So instead of doing that, I'm going to type an equal sign. And then I'm going to add these cells together. And if you're adding a bunch of things, you want to use the formula sum. When you start typing a formula, you'll notice that Excel suggests a bunch of different options. Um, you can select from this list, uh, and they also will kind of tell you some additional information about them, which is really useful. 
Um, Excel automatically does all of their formulas as all capitals, but this also works even if it's lowercase. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to do equals sum, and then again, I could type in my numbers here, but I don't want to type out the numbers. I want Excel to look in these cells. So I do sum, start my parentheses to tell it what to take the sum of, and then I'm going to highlight the three cells that I want added up. Notice that in my formula here, it has given me this notation B4 colon B6. This is how Excel addresses cells. So the B means column B, and then I have uh, cell rows 4, 5, and 6. So this is a range of cells. I will close the parentheses around that. And if I press enter, it's going to compute that same sum of $2,650. So now go ahead and find the sum of your expenses the same way, so using the sum formula. In my case, I get sum of G4 colon G10. Um, yours might be different if you happen to put those numbers in a different row or had, uh, in different column or had different rows, and that's fine. So it looks like luckily my total income here is higher than my total expenses. Um, so I can compute a balance here. So I'm going to do my total income minus my total expenses. So I'm doing this as a formula. I started with the equal sign and I'm using these pre-computed cells with a subtraction in, inside. So C15 minus C16 in this case. So there, this is telling me my balance is $375. So according to this budget here, I've got $375 left over um, at the end. The great thing about using um, formulas with these cell references is that if I come in and adjust this, say, oh, okay, my health insurance just went up, now it's 125 instead of 100. Notice that this has automatically updated our calculations here. I now only have a balance of 350 instead of 375. I also might want to add things to this, so maybe I'm going to add a savings category, and I'm going to put all of that $350 in savings. Now this has not changed the calculation, but Excel has this little flag that comes up. If you can see it on the screen, there's a little green triangle on my total expenses column. If I mouse over that, there's a little warning that says the formula in this cell refers to a range that has additional numbers adjacent to it. This is warning me that this formula I had set up, um, which I can edit either in the formula bar up here or by double clicking in the cell. I wanted the sum from G4 to G10, which is highlighted in blue here, but it's, it's warning me that, hey, there's another number here that you might want to include. I can adjust this manually by editing out the 10 and changing it to an 11, or I could just delete that reference entirely and re-highlight the whole list. By adding that 350 in savings, I now have a balance of zero, indicating that my income and expenses are equal. Um, and of course, if I keep changing numbers here, it will keep updating these totals. One other useful thing we can use cell, reference, cell references for in this case would be to look at um, the percentage of my total expenses that each expense represents. So if I'm looking at my rent, I want to know how much of all of my expenses does this rent account for. As a calculation, that would mean taking $1,200 divided by um, my total expenses, or this $2,650. But I'm going to do this as a calculation right next to this using cell references. So I'm going to do equals, I'll click on this $1,200 divided by 
and then I'll click on my total expenses. This here tells me that my rent is 45% or 0.45 um, of all of my total expenses. Since this is a percentage, I might as well format it with my number formatting to 45%. I can add decimals or take them away if we want to. This is a pretty significant amount. You probably don't want your rent to account to this, uh, this much of your income. But let's go ahead and try and do this for all these other values. One of the best things about Excel is that once you've written a formula once, you can grab the bottom right hand corner where there's a little green square. Um, if you put your mouse over it, it turns into some crosshairs. So if I click on that and drag this down, we'll see what happens. Oh, I'm getting a bunch of errors. Let's see what's happening. So if I go to the cell, come up to my formula bar and say, okay, what is this computing? This is saying take G5, which is the cell written in blue, that's the amount I spent on car, and divide it by G17. Now the reason this is going to be a problem is that it's dividing by this number zero, and of course you can't divide by zero. If I wanted to know what percentage of my expenses was the car, I actually want this 250 number divided by total expenses again. So instead of C17, I would want it to be C16. If I put that in there, there's my 9.4%. That's exactly what I want to want. The problem that I had when I dragged this down is that if I look at each of these cells, it's updating both the numerator and denominator. So it's taking the number next to the cell and then divided by a box down here. But as it drags down, we're, we really want it to just divide by this total expenses every time. I'm going to adjust my original format in this first cell so that it's taking G4, so that was the expense for rent, divided by C16, but for this C16, I'm going to add a dollar sign in front of both the C and the 16. These dollar signs create what's called an absolute reference. It means in this calculation, I want you to look at the cell C16 and always the cell C16. Don't update it. So now if I change that, click on my cell again and drag it down, now we're getting some values that make sense. So if I come to the groceries entry and look at what this is doing, it's saying take G7, which is my groceries amount, divided by C16. So these formulas are updating the top number now as we drag it down to be whatever cell is next to it. But the bottom number is always going to be C16. So I'm getting each of these values as a percentage of my total expenses. And these percentages would be super useful to look at um, in terms of actual budgeting since I could see you know, where is most of my money going. In this case, rent seems to be taking up a lot of my budget, um, but groceries, restaurants, and savings are also significant portions. So if I wanted to cut something from my budget, I should pay attention to those areas. Just like we saw before with the sum functions, if I change any of these numbers, it will automatically update these percentages. So maybe if groceries, I say, okay, I can do $250 a month. It has updated my total expenses, and it has also updated all of these percentages. So now groceries is only 9.6%, and then the others have been updated since we have a new total. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.